Rita Banahi and James Morrow. Go for it, mate. Thank you for that great uh, welcome. Um, now, I'd just like to ask, is there anybody here who is not familiar with our little TV show called The Outsiders? Could you put your hand up, please? I get the hell out! <laughs> okay, I can't see any hands up. Okay, I'm going to ask another question. Are there any Bob Dylan fans here? Okay, if you're a Bob Dylan fan, can you please stand up? Please stand up. I'm a Bob Dylan fan. Please stand up with me. There's Bob like Dylan three fans. people. I'll okay, let's have the lights on. Okay, now then, what I want you to do, people who are standing up, that's fantastic, stay standing up, do not sit down. The rest of you, what I would like you to do now is practice what I call a cat's bum mouth. That's when you purse your lips like this and look like you're very disapproving. Think of Paul Barry on uh, the ABC media <laughs> voice, talking about outsiders, for example. So, first one, you're very disapproving. If you can't pull a face like that, could you please just practice hissing for me. Hiss. Can I hear a hiss? That's good. That's good. Hiss. Okay. Now, on the count of three, I want you all to pull a cat's bum mouth and hiss and point at the people standing up. On the count of three. One, two, three. Louder. Come on. Come on. You don't like these people. You don't like them. They're Bob Dylan fans. You hate them. Okay. Now, you can sit down now, folks. Now, did you see how easy it was for me to divide a group of people? We've got a thousand people here. This is what a so-called conservative government did in this state less than 12 months ago. They turned 90% of the population against 10% of the population. They made your neighbours pull cat's bums mouths and hiss at you and point at you as you walk down the street simply because you hadn't taken some uh, medicine or whatever it was. They can do it then, they'll do it again, and they'll keep on doing it. They want to do it, as we had the brilliant Jacinta Price this morning, the bravest woman in Australia, by the way. Give a big round of applause. Jacinta Price is the bravest woman in Australia. And shortly, shortly, I'll be introducing you to the second bravest woman in Australia. Rita's the third. Um, <laughs> We are in a war against authoritarianism. We are in a war against the collective. We are, we are now in a situation, whatever CPAC was three or four years ago, climate change, immigration, whatever it was, we are now in a very, very simple fight. It's a battle between the rights and responsibilities of the individual versus the tyranny of the collective. That's it. Every single issue you hear today and tomorrow falls into that category. Now, the only way that the individual can fight is to raise their voice and to speak out. We have had conservatives, my editorial in The Spectator, which, by the way, you've got a free copy of The Spectator there. You've got a fantastic cover there from Sarah Dudley, who's sitting here. You can say hello to her later on. Give her a big round of applause. And you also have Alexandra Marshall, who is the editor of The Online Spectator, who does such a brilliant job. She's here today as well. Give her a big round of applause. Now, the only way, the only way, my editorial this week is simply that the curse of conservatism is cowardice. That's it. The curse of conservatism is cowardice. We've had enough of cowardly conservatives. It's no longer good enough to just sit there and go, oh, well, let's not worry about this. We'll have an election in a few years' time. Conservatives must speak up. The, you as individuals must speak up and raise your voices. And if you learn anything today, it is that an individual can make a huge difference. Nigel Farage made a huge difference. He'll be talking about that. Zion Light's uh, Extinction Rebellion she joined, and then she realized that she could actually solve the problem she was concerned about in a different way, an individual who spoke up. You're going to hear individuals today. It is the individual who speaks up who changes the world. Rita Panahi comes from Iran, or her parents are from Iran. Iran now, brave women, brave individuals are taking off their hijabs, throwing them away to fight against an oppressive regime. Rita. Wow, and you talk about 
our brave women, uh, it takes a great deal of courage to protest in a country like Iran where you can be locked up, you can be beaten, you can be killed for dissent, for protesting. You can have all those things happen to you for just uh, incorrectly wearing your compulsory hijab. So these women whose mothers were free, I mean, this is the thing a lot of people don't understand about Iran is, it hasn't always been some Islamist hellhole. It used to be relatively modern, free, Western. Certainly my mum's generation, you look at the photos from the 60s and 70s and you could be looking at New York or London, you know, the fashions and, and, and the atmosphere. And then the Islamic Revolution happened and people's rights were overnight stripped away, particularly women. So we've got to understand that you can go backwards. There's not just this endless progress towards greater freedom and individual liberty. Things that you took for granted can be taken from you and freedom has to be fought for. It's never free. And I think our generation has uh, been a little bit pampered for too long. Our conservatives have become you say cowardice, but they're lazy, they're unprincipled. They don't actually have values that they want to go to war for. Well, say what you will about the left. You look at the Albanese government right now, they're not wasting a second. They are pushing through their agenda every single day, making appointments, making uh, consequential policy changes. <laughs> what did the coalition do? How many terms were they in for? And really, what values did they protect? What values did they advance? And we've got to stop just protecting. We've got to actually advance our values. We've got to fight for our values. Well, that's exactly right. And I mean, the thing is, really, you know, you talk about Iran. And we're all, of course, stunned uh, and shocked and horrified by the scenes that we're seeing out of Iran. And by the way, where is Joe Biden? Mm. And where is Anthony Albanese? And where are the Western governments who all want to give Iran a nuclear weapon for whatever reason on this well known? They're, they're all being silent about that. But, you know, that's the really th big thing, though, about freedom. You know, okay, there the freedom and the fight for freedom is a very physical, visceral one. It's out there on the streets. But here, don't think that there's not, you know, different mm. sort of issues. I mean, like, we live in a society now where if you often don't say the right things, don't think the right things, don't mouth the right platitudes, don't stand for the right ceremonies that we've all decided are important for us uh, and respect them, then you, know, you can lose your job, you can lose your respect, you can be dragged online, you can become unemployable, all of these things. And you know, in that sense, it was a lot like you know, in the old days of Eastern Europe when you, know, you, could, you were free to say, hey, the government sucks, but you're going to get a job or you're going to lose your job. And this is the thing, though, about freedom. What you made a point, Rita, I think was absolutely correct. Freedom is not the natural state of nature. The natural state of nature is that people lord it over one another, the yeah. strong over the weak, you know, people who want power versus those who just want to get on and lead their lives. Freedom is something like, you know, anything, anything that is built by man, yes, man, man and woman, of course, you know, whatever you gender. Uh, but uh, but that, that, that you care about, you know, it has to be maintained. Your house has to be maintained. Your car has to be maintained. The Harbor Bridge, you know, they start painting it every year at one end, and by the time they get to the other end, they've dealt with all the rust and painted it, and then they have to start again. Coming if across you stop the... that, and if you stop that process, what happens? Well, we see what's happening. We see what's happening right now. Rust sets in, <laughs> decay sets in, and things start falling apart. So everybody here, you know, as part of this, what you're doing is essentially, you know, you are the maintenance crew for freedom in this country.